tonight. The Alaska Storm put their undefeated record on the line when they meet Joey Langdon and the San Antonio Vaqueros. Will we see dominance reign or will San Antonio be the one stepping in the spotlight as the chase of the championship heats up? Virtual reality meets reality as users just like you at the field for glory. The first controllerless competitive eSport in the world continues on the Twitch front page right now. Hey, Cam. Man, you got me jacked up. That intro was fire. We were so jacked up, my mic wasn't loud enough. We're good now. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think uh, being loud is going to be a problem tonight. This, this, this crowd in San Antonio is going crazy. This is the best of the West, baby. Let's get it on. San Antonio's been thinking about this since the last time Alaska beat them. We're here at Vaquero's Ranch Field. And we're fired up. Alaska, kick it, run away. From two yards deep in the end zone, San Antonio returning the kick out past the 22. And that's where the Vaqueros will start with it. Quarterback Joey Langdon. Yeah, Joey Langdon, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the SFL cam. We're going to see a show of accuracy tonight as these two quarterbacks they don't make many mistakes don't expect a lot of turnovers in this game each of these teams has six on the season san antonio starts with an eye formation with daily holder at the bottom of the screen three-step drop for langdon flips it out to anderson silver and silver will pick up four let's meet the starting lineups of the alaska defense Third in pass defense, third in rush defense. Alex Dominguez, Andrew Francis, Ryan Davidson, Evan Carroll, Tony Willis, and Ryan Tobin. The name to watch there, Alex Dominguez, and also known as Big Sexy. Six tackles, five sacks last week against Dallas. Five receivers for Langdon on a second down and six back to pass. Has plenty of time, Langdon, deep ball caught. On the, no, they said it was incomplete on the sideline. Oh. Daly Holder, it's third down and six coming up, and I think San Antonio, that's worth a challenge. It was close, Cam. I mean, boy, I don't know. I, I, I'd have to take another look at it. I don't think we're going to get another chance to look at it there. Probably just too early to spin one of those challenges. Yeah, you're probably right, as uh, San Antonio is going to go with third and six and let that incompletion go. That was a tough call on the far sideline. Langdon, three-step drop, going to fire another deep ball, and that pass is knocked away. One-on-one -on -one coverage looking for Daly Hornish down the field, and Ryan Davidson gives it a swat, and that's a three and out for San Antonio on their opening possession. Make no mistake. The bread and butter of this Alaska team, it's defense. Number three in the SFL, only allowing 15.8 points a game so far this season, and they showed you right there why. So San Antonio is going to put the football away here, and Alaska will get their first crack on offense. San Antonio tonight in the silver helmets and pants with the blue jerseys. Alaska in the dark blue helmets with the light blue jerseys and the white pants as Alaska returns that up to the 33-yard line. Ron Cochran is the quarterback for the Storm. And if you're the Storm, this game could not have started better. You're in the opponent's house. You're able to get a three and out, and now you're giving one of the best offenses in the SFL the ball. And that man right there, Cochran's your leader. First and 10 at the 33-yard line for Alaska. 
Two receivers to the top of the screen. Cochran, the lefty, back to throw. Little pressure, dumps it off short. Pass caught for a pickup of eight yards out of the 41. And let's meet the San Antonio defense. Bailey Baca, Obi Okoye, B.J. Armstrong, Nicholas Warner, Jared Olsen, and Arminius Davis, the punter. Part of this defense that's seventh against the pass and 11th against the run. Okoye, 11 total tackles, two tackles for loss last week in a win over St. Louis. Second down and two coming up for Cochran, and Cochran floats one over the middle, and it's almost Ooh. picked off by Obi Okoye. He had it, Stephen. Third down and two coming up with a 41 for the Storm. That's an opportunity there that we may look back on as a little bit of a game changer. We talked about last week how those small little opportunities can add up at the end of the game. That's one you got to get. 9.29 to go in the first quarter. It's the midseason classic on the SFL Network, and Ron Cochran on a third and two, throws a wobbly ball, it's knocked away and incomplete. So both defenses come out electric. And uh, San Antonio's gonna force an early punt. That pass was knocked away by Denzel Nice in the non-contract corner. Yeah, we're seeing these, these gunslingers come out and they are bombing the ball. They are going for the throat early here in San Antonio. Both of these, uh, these teams air it out quite frequently. Alaska the, is actually the, the worst rushing team in the league at only 34 yards per game. But they, they counted out with the number two passing offense. Four down and two, San Antonio for the 19 on the punt return up to the 26 yard line. And let's meet the San Antonio Vaqueros starting offense. Sixth in uh, passing yards, ninth in rushing yards. More balanced than Alaska. Joey Langdon, Anderson Silver, the new running back addition. Daly Hornish, Daly Holder, the receivers. Ricardo Hernandez at tight end, and Antonio Flowerglass is your star kicker. Yeah, Flowerglass, one of the uh, one of the very few star kickers in the league. A perfect 10 for 10 on field goal. And off to Silver, he loses a yard. Dropped in the backfield, second and 11 coming up as that tackle in the backfield made by Gerald Thomas. Silver only had 11 carries last week against St. Louis, but he got 101 yards on the ground. That's a 9.2 yards per carry average. High formation, second down, 11 at the 25 yard line, 8.48 to go in the first quarter, back to pass is Langdon. Langdon side on throw, pass caught for a pickup of eight. That's Daly Holder's first grab, it's third down and three. Yeah, nice job by Langdon there. The pocket presence to get the ball out. He was definitely looking down the barrel of some blitzes there. Ball didn't come out clean, but it was effective. It got to his man and uh, he was able to make the catch. A pivotal third down and three here as one of these teams tries to pick up the first first down of the game. The fullback caught it and fell over. Does he know he's in prime time? Who was that? Kyle Scott, get off the field, fourth down. Yeah, not exactly a ballerina there. Just lost his feet from underneath him. We say that happened a lot here in the SFL. Maybe we need to get some kind of a balance and strength coach into some of these teams. We see a lot of players uh, falling just a bit too much. So San Antonio and Alaska have combined for three, three and outs on their first three possessions. As Flower Glass, the superstar punter, will get it away. And from the 23-yard line on the return, a little bit of room up to the 28, but that's where Alaska will start with it. This uh, this punter, uh, Arminius Davis, he has been uh, something else this season for San Antonio. Yeah, he's proving how just how important, even in the SFL, how important that field position game is. If he can add an extra 10, 15 yards to every drive and, and make them have to go possibly an extra Give him almost an extra series or two. That's that's a quality quality uh, play there. Deep ball, Cochran diving. Oh, it's tipped and intercepted. Intercepted off the drop. 35-30 on the return. San Antonio up to the 25-yard line. It's B.J. Armstrong. What a critical mistake for Alaska. And B.J. Armstrong, this dude came alive last week. Seven tackles and an interception. Gets another one right here. Off the hands, you gotta make that catch if you are on Alaska. 
the nice reaction by this defensive playmaker. Hey, the guy is an absolute ball magnet. That was Optimus Klein that dropped the pass, and that's as big of a shocker as we've seen all season. You had a feeling these two teams were just kind of feeling each other out. And finally, here's the first break, and let's see what San Antonio can do with it. Four receivers, two to either side now for the Vaqueros, all of a sudden in great position to get a score. Sidearm throw to Anderson Silver, picks up three. If you're joining us for the first time, what is the SFL? We are the first controllerless competitive eSport in the world. Off the field, real life users like you create, customize, and shape their very own football player's career. On the field, it's hands-free gaming. Get involved at simulationfl.net. Second and seven. Five wide for San Antonio with press coverage at the line. Langdon back the pass out of the gun, pump fake. Now here comes the pressure. Langdon pass caught, first down. Daly Hornish out of the 12-yard line. Alex Dominguez in that Alaska defense hasn't gotten there yet, Steven. Let me tell you what, <laughs> Ron Cochran, we're gonna start calling this guy the ice man. The guy's got ice in his veins. He sits in the pocket, he's patient. He finds his wide receiver with accuracy and strength. He's got the arm to make all the throws and he'll throw it all over the field. First down and 10 at the 12, 6.25 to go in the first quarter. No score between Alaska and San Antonio, but the underdog Vaqueros are on the move. Three-step drop for Langdon again. Langdon, quick throw, nearly knocked, uh, well, knocked away, but nearly picked off as both teams with active hands early in this game. Jason Julian with the knockaway. 6-18 left to go in the first quarter. Second and 10 at the 12. Welcome all newcomers. From the SFL front, or from the uh, Twitch front page, a little carried away there. We'll get, we'll get our own page someday. Langdon back to pass, and he flips out a swing to Anderson Silver, and Silver spins back inside, nearly got the first down. Davidson on the tackle. It's third down and one from the three. Yeah, Anderson Silver has proven to be a guy who is a reliable receiver out of the backfield. Had seven receptions last week, 47 yards and a touchdown. I expect them to eclipse those numbers tonight. Third and one at the three, halfway through the first quarter, scoreless here on the front page. Five down linemen for Alaska. San Antonio's trying to get the upper edge. Back to pass, Langdon. Langdon, deep floor to the end zone, knocked away and nearly taken away by Alaska. But they cannot get their hands on these footballs here. It's going to bring up fourth down and one and likely an early field goal as Alaska's defense stands tall. Big win for the Storm defense. They don't overreact to the turnover. They play their game. They, uh, they're, they're able to, to keep what looks like could be possibly an uh, upcoming field goal after this. Look at this. They're on the field. Yeah. Play clock in the top left there. 11-10. San Antonio may say, what the heck? Try to get Alaska to jump offside. It's not going to work. The undefeated Storm is going to stand tall, and the timeout is taken by San Antonio so they'll send I mean when you got a star kicker out there it's hard to take points off the board especially in a critical moment like this yeah but I like the thought I mean let's go ahead we're this close if we don't make it you don't get the points but you're putting Alaska in just terrible field position and, and you're making a statement but uh, you know they're gonna settle for the field goal put points on the board and this is a team you know they're not spectacular San Antonio is not spectacular in any one area they're just well balanced. Uh, so, you know, this is a, a an offense that uh, a lot, that scores 22 points a game, and their defense gives up 22 points a game. So, any points that they can get really helps. Them. So the extra point for or the field goal, basically an extra point, is good from 20 yards away. San Antonio is the first team on the board with 5:38 to go in the first quarter. And now a word from the SFL. Want to do what I do? Contact me in the DM on Discord to find out how you can get involved with streaming live games, calling games, or breaking them down on the air with our broadcast team. Or help make our production even better by joining our new live stats team, helping our broadcasters shine brighter. We are hashtag loading legends in the SFL. From the three, Robert Merrill on the return, spins away from one, gets it out to the 26-yard line. First and 10, the SFL convention will be at the Hilton Garden Inn in Las Colinas, Texas. It is official and at Show Business Studios on July 13th through the 15th. Don't miss 
this once in a lifetime potentially event. And thanks to Show Business Studios for being such a terrific partner. Here in our 10th anniversary season, it's 3 0 San Antonio over Alaska. The handoff goes to uh, at, uh, down past the 40, the 42 yard line. That's Stanley Nordellis, and he makes it happen. Yeah, he almost gains more yardage in that run than they've averaged per game. Uh, this is not typically a running offense, uh, but they have shown that they can be effective in spots, and there was one of them. So that's the first move of the chains for Alaska, and you wouldn't have wow. thought that it would come on the ground in this game. 5-10 to go in the first quarter. 3-0 San Antonio here early. Split back, side of the gun, back to pass, and Cochran steps up in the pocket, fires right side, perfect spiral. First down to the 44, Alaska's starting to get a rhythm. Robert Merrill on the reception. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be there all day, I believe, for Cochran. 44 of 60 last week, 350 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. He showed you why. They've got a lot of confidence in this guy, and uh, he has the arm to make all the throws. 4.43 to go in the first. First and 10 from the 44. Alaska is across midfield for the first time tonight. Optimus Klein still does not have a catch. Three-step drop, Cochran. Cochran out to the fullback who makes the catch. And a spin move and got away from two. That's a an eight-yard gain for the fullback, Hank Granite. Somebody's got to step up. Hey, and if you have non-contract players step, stepping up like they've done in this series for Alaska, Boy, there's some bad things ahead for San Antonio. I'm hearing that Twitch is having some problems not letting people cheer. That is just, uh, that's filthy. That, that Somebody needs to go to confession for that. Second and two at the 35. Four minutes to go in the first. Three receivers, Cochran play action. Cochran back to pass and a floater. One-handed on the sideline by Robert Merrill. Both quarterbacks are uh, having time to throw here in the first quarter, and their receivers are making them look good. Yeah, and, and this quarterback delivers a very catchable ball camp. Uh, he 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 put he had a lot of touch on that ball, put it right where the receiver could catch it. It's just a, a nice overall play and, and good good play calling right there. The guy was wide open. We're waiting to introduce the starting lineups for Alaska, but they keep making too many good plays, and that is another one-handed catch over the middle, pickup of five, and uh, we'll get to it now. The starting lineups from the storm. The second ranked pass offense, the 18th ranked rush team uh, offense. Ron Cochran, Optimus Klein, Robert Merrill, Jeff Camo, Yassine Clifton, and Brad Pretchett, the kicker. Robert Merrill, the, the veteran wide receiver, 12 catches, 150 yards with a touchdown last week. Out to the fullback, that's Granite, but he's gonna lose a yard, maybe two. Tackle made on the outside by Mark Chance, non-contract corner, third down and six at the 27. Cochran might be seeing Ghost a little bit there, uh, getting the, rid of the ball really quickly to his release valve. Would have liked him to stand in the pocket a little bit longer and find, and give his receivers a, a, an opportunity to get open. 2.45 to go in the first, back to pass, Cochran outside, caught, no, they said he was out of bounds. That is Como, that would have been his first catch, and instead it's going to bring on Bretchett. Yeah, just a weird kind of movement by the wide receiver there. I guess he was just trying to, to extend the route a little bit so he could get closer to the sticks, but he ends up not giving him a chance to even, even uh, to get it in bounds. Mighty RX, owner of Alaska, is in the chat room saying, go for it. What are we doing? But uh, fourth and six, star kicker. I think he knows what his coaching staff's going to do. 43-yard field goal, the left-footed kicker from the left hash. San Antonio tries to put on the block. Nearly got there. Alaska's field goal is up and good. From 43 yards, and we're tied. Yeah, you talked about Max Paul, the owner of uh, Alaska here. You know, Cam, he's Canadian. Uh, so maybe we can uh, have some poutine, maybe a little beaver tail, play a little bit of that five-pin bowling. What do you say, Mighty? I don't know what any of those things mean. Me neither. <laughs> Hopefully he'll explain it in chat. <laughs> Two, 2.37 to go in the first. We're just being honest here. Uh, three to three in a great game. Here on the front page, 5-0 Alaska, 3-2 San Antonio. 
Here in week six, the end of week six. San Antonio on the return, it's Warner. Warner past the 20 and pushing his way out of the 27 yard line. Here's an updated look at your SFL playoff standings. The top eight, or the uh, top eight are listed. The top 10 make it. And uh, the graphic doesn't want to load, so we'll try it again later. 2.32 to go in the first. I think it's the same people shutting off our bits. Yeah. First and 10 of the 27. Split backs in the backfield and a receiver to the left of Langdon. Back to pass Joey. Got Silver, but Silver had to make an adjustment to the football, uh, and he lost two yards. Yeah, just a broken play there. He had blockers in front of him trying to set up the screen pass, uh, but momentum just carried uh, the, 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 the running back there out of bounds on, on what was a, a, a pretty sloppy pass. Second down and 12 at the 25-yard line. 3-3, three to three, 220 to go in the first. For all those watching for the first time, hello, everybody. I'm Cameron Irvine alongside Stephen Mullinex. Four receivers. Langdon again getting it out of his hands quick. Silver makes the catch up to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and seven. And, Stephen, we're seeing Joey Langdon get the ball out of his hands quickly here in most of this first quarter. Alex Dominguez is a beast. Yeah, yeah. Big sexy will get after you. Uh, he can take over games uh, from that defensive end spot. He'll come screaming off the edge if you let him. Uh, there's no wonder that they've gone to a more of a short passing game. Empty backfield, five wide. Langdon out of the shotgun, three in the back, or three down lineman for Alaska. Langdon dumps it over the middle. That pass is almost caught by Hornish, uh, and he almost took that the other way, but that was not a good offensive series for San Antonio, and uh, they're going to have to kick it away, and Alaska is starting to build some momentum. Yeah, not exactly sure what the quarterback was looking at there. I mean, clearly double, maybe you can make the argument, triple covered there. No chance, zero chance of making a first down unless that receiver makes some kind of Randy Moss type move. Upcoming broadcast schedule here on the SFL Network on Saturday, Atlanta takes on London. SFL Fan Night returns week seven. And then Monday night, Tallahassee and... Uh, Tallahassee and who? It's a mystery. Queen City, I believe. As uh, Merrill returns up to the 33-yard line. Let's get a look at that one more time. Tallahassee, Queen City. I knew it, Stephen. A couple hey, of Eastern. That's going to be a good game. Uh, right Eastern, there. Eastern Conference battles in prime time. Yeah, I, I was about to say Tallahassee, and it doesn't matter. Uh, but Queen City, <laughs> Queen City matters for sure. Now wait a minute. Tallahassee's not even uh, not even in first place right now. I I. Prove it to you if the standings would load. For 132 to go in the first, three to three. Back to pass Cochran. Cochran, a little bit of happy feet, throws to the sideline. It's ruled a catch to Optimus Klein. Pick up of one, and he goes over to the sideline and has some words with Joey Langdon, second and one. Yeah, this guy's got that kind of personality. <laughs> He's uh, confrontational. And look at the twinkle toes right there. Toe drag swag. 128 to go in the first. Shout outs in the chat. Shut 73R. Dante West, Iceman Gervin, Firebird 586. Vancouver Legion, Ray Ray West, Yassine Clifton, and more. Back to pass to Nordellis. First down. And uh, Ron Cochran doing a good job of spreading the ball around here tonight. Tackle made by Larry Jordan. How many different players have got a catch in this first quarter? Yeah, a lot. And we've seen the utilization of running backs out of the backfield a lot as well tonight. 50 seconds to go in the first. San Antonio holding their own against the unbeaten storm here on the Twitch front page. Back to pass. Cochran. Cochran outside dropped and nearly picked off again off a drop pass. And Alaska's receivers a little sloppy here in the first quarter. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a missed opportunity for San Antonio. But uh, if you're Alaska, you know that those plays are going to happen. They're going to, when you're, when you're talking about non-contract, even contract wide receivers, they're going to make drops. You just have to, ha have to hope they, they happen at opportune times. They're on first down. It's not going to hurt you. Two backs and two receivers for Cochran out of the gun. Back to pass. Flips it outside. That, I believe, is uh, Grant. The full, or Granite, the fullback, rather, who's been heavily at, no, check that, that is Shabadibo, 
at tight end. I'm, I'm telling you, these are players I haven't even seen play this year. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I won't be surprised if the water boy doesn't come out there and get a catch or two. They are, they are chucking the ball to every single person out there. Uh, just a crazy amount. They're just, and they're just taking what San Antonio's giving. Third down and five, coming down to the end of the first quarter. Cochran play action against a blitz. Cochran gets it out of his hands, caught first down. Beautiful play to the 36-yard line. That is the end of the first quarter of play. That's the end of the first quarter. And your score is Alaska three, three. and San Antonio three. You're watching the SFL Network on Twitch TV. First and 10 at the 36, Stephen Mullinex, Cameron Irvine along with you. On the Twitch front page, we got a tie ball game. Alaska trying to get the first touchdown on the board. Tonight is Cochran will flip it out short. And that pass is hauled in for a two yard game by Nordellis. Cochran's got 74 passing yards, but we've only seen uh, Cochran go further than about 15 yards down the field, I think once, and it was Klein's drop that led to a pick. Yeah, that was early on, and then we've seen a, a, a much more conservative passing game from them since. Uh, you know, at some point, though, you think that they're, they're absolutely going to start airing it out here. Cochran outside, caught by Merrill. No, they said he was out of bounds. Maybe that's oh. worth a challenge. I don't think so. I don't I don't think he was out of bounds, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, again, yeah, I don't think they're going to call it. I think they're going to try and get this third and eight. You know, and they are very confident, Alaska, on third down. They're the number one third down converting team in the SFL. 60% of the time, Cam, they convert on third down. This game feels like a playoff game out there. Third down and eight now, five wide for Cochran. Four down line and a dime look for San Antonio. Back to pass Cochran, faced with immediate pressure, and the pass is also ruled incomplete. And it's San Antonio, not Alaska, that's getting the pressure here in the first half. Wow, some of these calls, Cam. <laughs> I don't understand what the stripes are seeing out there, not seeing. Uh, I thought that was a, a, a catch again, in, in, you know, in the field of play. Yeah, it looked like back-to-back uh, -back catches for me. And uh, absolutely. Yeah, they're not. It's funny enough. They're throwing to San Antonio sideline. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know who that uh, side judge is over there. 50-yard field goal for Brad Bretchen. And the left-footed star kicker from 50 drills it. And Alaska's wow. up three. I didn't think that was a very clean catch by the holder there, but he did his best to get the ball down. And, and, and hey, this is why you pay these guys the big bucks, right, to make these kind of clutch kicks. And that was huge. Let's hear from the SFL. Follow the SFL on Twitter at SimulationFL on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels. You're already here, right? Might as well stay tuned. Get league updates on your phone while browsing the internet and make sure you never miss a live broadcast. Thank you for supporting the SFL. So Brad Bretchett's got a couple of field goals, star kicker. Antonio Flower uh, Glass has a field goal, star kicker, and it's six to three, Alaska, on top of San Antonio. Here in the SFL's week seven game of the week on the front page of Twitch. Two backs in the backfield. Langdon's gonna sneak it up the middle. He got nothing. And a couple of players combine on the stop. I did not see that coming, Stephen. I'm surprised Alaska was even ready for it. Gerald Thomas with the stop. That's probably why they ran it, uh, <laughs> to try and uh, catch the storm out of position. But uh, this is a tough defensive line to do that on. First down quarterback sneak reminds me of the Dallas Roughnecks last season. <laughs> Crash Combs with 50 bits, True Shot Collar with 50 bits, show me your bits, free play offside, and it's outside to Silver. But the officials are gonna make the call. I think San Antonio is gonna accept this. First penalty of the night, and Vaqueros will accept it. So will bring up first and five. Yeah, but nice individual play by the running back there. 
Uh, it's a nice little shifty move to get those extra yards. It won't show up on the stat sheet, but uh, you got to love the hustle. 9.20 to go in the first half, second and five at the 27. 6-3 Alaska, hand off to Silver, bounces off a tackler and picks up a couple. Wrapped up at the end of the play, I believe, by Tony Willis, which is the first time we've said his name all night. Third down and three. If you're just joining us, what is the SFL? We are the first controllerless, competitive eSport in the world, Steve. We did our research. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, this league is special for a reason. Hey, guys, get involved. This is something really special you've never seen before. Back to pass, Langdon. Langdon hit as he threw. That was Dominguez driving him backwards. And San Antonio is going to have to send Davis back out there to punt it away as Alaska's defense is tightening, tightening up. And I think both teams are playing a little tight right now. You can definitely tell both did their homework knowing they were going to be on the front. And these are two underrated defenses as well, Cam. And they've come to play tonight. They've, uh, they've tipped a lot of balls. And that's the first time we've really seen Dominguez have an effect. you got to think he's going to get it rolling here soon. Welcome to the chat, CRN X94. And from the 21 yard line, Merrill on the return, bouncing off of would be tacklers up to the 28, uh, 29. Again, if you're just joining us, San Antonio in the silver helmets, blue jerseys, silver pants, Alaska, dark blue helmets, light blue jerseys, white pants uh, with the white numbers and the. Uh, Double blue right. trim, the red accents on the helmet. The SFL Today halftime report is coming up with an update on our expansion teams and how they're doing this year. A major announcement by the SFL and highlights of week six. Don't go anywhere for the SFL Today at the half. Hand off Nordellis on a trap and Nordellis spins away, picks up eight. I got to say the, uh, the MVPs of the first half are the two boys out of the backfield for Alaska. Yeah, I mean, look... The that non-contract right there, just that 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 running back. Look, look at the move that he was able to put on. He's a, that's that's savvy for a non-contract. They're getting a lot of effectiveness effectiveness from this guys. Now their star players need to step up. 8.05 to go in the first half. Cochran out of the gun. Steps in the pocket as he throw the ball. Oh, it's picked off! He picked it off off the deflection off the offensive lineman. There's a flag for ineligible or for illegal touching down the field, but San Antonio's gonna get the ball. That was amazing. Hey, Madden Gang got nothing on that, all right? That, that, that was, we're not gonna get to see a replay probably at halftime, but man, oh, here we go, great. We get to see this. Look at it. Look at it, ping pong off the offensive lineman. And what goes up in the air and the defender grabs it in midair, snatches it. Amazing what, play. What's crazy, Stephen, oh. is the last time these teams met, do you remember a defensive lineman for Alaska knocked it up in the air and allowed their their guy to go for a pick six, and that was a game changer. Unbelievable. Wow. It happened twice in the same season with these two teams. Langdon out to Silver. Silver trying to get going, makes the move, and then wrapped up quickly. Andrew Francis, first time they called his name, a pick of just four. I can't get over that pick. Yeah, and, and this is, these are two teams that don't turn the ball over, and we've already seen a couple spectacular turnovers. That might be the best of the season that we've seen. Craziest, bouncing off uh, uh, an offensive lineman twice up in midair for them to snatch it away. That, that was crazy. You mentioned that both teams have only turned the ball over six times coming into the game. San Antonio is winning the turnover battle today, 2-0. Out to Silver. Silver gets a few more yards, then gets popped by Evan Carroll. A critical third down and three coming up for San Antonio. Somebody's got to start getting touchdowns, especially the Vaqueros, off these mistakes. Yeah, we're, you know what they're missing, Cam? They're missing uh, chunk plays. They're not getting any huge chunk plays like we're – we're used to seeing these teams get. They're playing very conservative ball, throwing a lot to the running back in the first half. Four receivers, two to either side. Langdon's out of the gun, three, four D, back to pass. Langdon goes short, caught, diving, but underneath three different Alaska players. Daly Hornish with the catch, and San Antonio's in the red zone. Nice play by Hornish to keep his concentration surrounded by storm defenders. He knows that's a critical, critical first down for them to get in the red zone. And here we go, Cam, let's see if they can cash in. 
First and 10 at the 16. San Antonio on the move. Straight back Langdon into traffic and Holder with the dive for it. 6.20 to go. Uh, retro AISU, not even going to try the pronunciation, but uh, he's he's wondering if this is a real thing, Steve. Tits. Hey. <laughs> we are the first controllerless competitive eSport in the world. These are real users, real people just like you down there in those uniforms. They're avatars, and uh, we're a he heck of a defensive game they're playing tonight. Trips off the left side, 6.20 to go in the first half, 6.3 Alaska. Back to pass, Langdon. Langdon gets it away, and Holder picks up eight, down to the eight. Third and two, and I tell you what, man, Langdon is standing tall tonight, and he is making all the right plays. Yeah, not intimidated by tight windows, Cam. This guy can throw it through a keyhole when he needs to. Third and two at the eight. Langdon enjoying a bounce back season. Split backs Langdon to throw. Langdon sacked. Loss of five. Big sexy. In the backfield, Alex Dominguez, fourth and seven. Only a matter of time before Big Sexy starts to put his thing down. And look at him scream off the edge right there. And Langdon, from the blind side, gets blasted. So another field goal coming for Antonio Flowerglass. It's been that type of a first half, but boy, has it been exciting. Two wild interceptions for San Antonio, and they've gotten points off both. But still no touchdowns here in the first half. Uh, as this has been an incredible defensive slugfest here. 30 yards away, flower glass just before the block got there, and the field goal is good. Six to six, a battle of star kickers here on the front page. Yeah, easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's that's a gimme for flower glass, who is perfect on the season now. A perfect 12 for 12. Currently the most accurate kicker in the SFL. I always wonder what we're going to say on these broadcasts. And easy peasy lemon squeezy was not on the list. We have done it again, ladies and gentlemen. 514 to go in the first half. Alaska on the return from inside their goal line. Robert Merrill, 15-20. Merrill in a mess of nothing. Out to the 23-yard line with 509 to play. Key dates on the SFL calendar coming March 28th. It's the start of the SFL playoffs. The 10th championship game is in April, and we got that big convention in July. Cam, we've seen so many games like this where we'll they'll just have field goals there in the first half and see just a, an explosion of offense in the second half and sit there scratching our heads, asking ourselves, where was that the whole time? Cochran flips it outside. Another short uh, route picks up eight yards. That was Como with his first official catch. And then I, B.J. Armstrong, who came onto the scene just a couple of weeks ago in San Antonio, already has a pick tonight and is playing some great defense out there. Yeah, I had a pick last week too, so uh, a nice little streak going there for Armstrong. Uh, hey, he may not be done the way Cochran's already thrown two interceptions tonight. Back to pass, Cochran, second down and two. Oh, it's, no, oh, my goodness gracious, I thought there was going to be another one. You got to catch the ball. Hank Granite, the fullback, makes this mistake. And Alaska is very fortunate they're in a tie ball game right now. Yeah, two interceptions already on the night for Cochran. Throwing a lot to these non-contract uh, wide receivers and, 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 and fullbacks and running backs. Uh, they've spread the ball out a lot, but, but these guys aren't always used to catching the ball. And uh, we've seen a couple flubs that could have gone the other way. Dangerous for Cochran right there. That's the third drop of this game for Alaska receivers. Third down and two at the 32. San Antonio's defense going to try it again. Back to pass Cochran. Quick throw knocked away. Breaking on the ball. That was beautiful. Jared Olsen, the free safety, comes up and forces Alaska's offense off the field. Hey, Jared Olsen loves to hunt in the offseason. Well, he was doing a little hunting right there. Almost came down with the with the catch, but a beautiful defense being played. And if you're you're Alaska, you've made some mistakes tonight, uh, but they haven't. You know the scoreboard doesn't reflect it. It's still a six six game, and, and San Antonio hasn't taken advantage of those opportunities. Alaska's uh, the, one of the top teams in the SFL for a reason. You got to think the Vaqueros need to take advantage 
of uh, some of these plays that Alaska's leaving out for. Warner, return up to the 35. A word for the SFL. Join the world's fastest growing sim football community by jumping onto our Discord server. Use the Discord command in chat to keep up with schedules, news, notes, announcements, and polls. Jump off the sidelines and into the action. Here we're reloading legends at the SFL. Anderson Silver picks up one to start the San Antonio drive. And uh, we haven't seen a lot of runs out of San Antonio tonight. That's only the third or fourth one for Silver here in the first half. Well, they know that Alaska, they, they run an air raid offense. They like to throw the ball. I would think that probably uh, Coach Greg Morris is thinking, you know, they, they want to kind of match Alaska blow for blow through the air. Back to pass Langdon, outside and Silver for the second time tonight, spins his way out of bounds. And whose fault is that, Stephen? Is the pass just that off target, or is Silver not understanding where he is on the field? Well, you want you'd want your quarterback to get the ball out quicker, especially if that's the plan for the play. If that's the hot route to get it to the the running back, you want to get the ball out quicker, and then your running back's got to cut that route uh, towards the the end the sideline. There, it's got to cut it a little bit more crisp. Empty backs five wide. Back to pass Langdon. Langdon in trouble. Going to go down for a sack. Somebody, that was a wide receiver that missed a block there. That was a Bond that missed that block, and the sack goes to <laughs> I.B. Lurkin, fourth down. <laughs> and he was lurking on there, and he gave the quarterback happy feet, Cam. Uh, you just had the sense that the quarterback, he saw it coming early and just couldn't get out of the way. That was Jerome Bond that screwed the pooch on that uh, coverage on Langdon. Second sack of the day for Alaska. Three minutes to go in the second quarter, and Merrill's got nowhere to go. He gets popped by Benjamin Rodney, non-contract strong safety. 3:02 to play. The Hilton Garden Inn tonight is the official announcement. They are the official hotel of the SFL convention. Thanks so much for uh, being a partner. The Irving uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau has also been uh, a huge supporter of the convention coming up in July for the very first time. Hundreds of people are going to get to meet and they've been a part of this community for years. As Cochran's going long and the pass is knocked away. Denzel Neeson, that's the second time he's defended Merrill deep and San Antonio's not letting Alaska do anything in the first half. Yeah, these, this San Antonio secondary has locked down two of the best wide receiver targets in the SFL in Merrill and Klein. They have not been able to crack the foundation of this secondary as of yet. Nickel look for San Antonio's defense. Ball on the left hash, 21-yard line. Cochran, five-step drop, fires down the middle, caught. First down to the 36, Robert Merrill. Tackle made by Warner, and that's where Alaska's found their most success tonight, that 8 to 16 yard range uh, through the air. Well, they, you know, they have been spreading the ball out to everybody they can find in one of those uh, light blue uniforms. Uh, you got to, though, at some point, you pay these guys here, like where we're looking at Klein, you pay them a lot of money. At some point, they're going to need to beat this coverage. Yeah, Optimus Klein has been very quiet. Just one catch. My memory serves me correctly. Cochran's got all day to throw. The defense was just a hair late. And Como's been stepping it up as uh, Neeson makes the tackle again. Yeah, this Cochran guy, man, elite arm strength. He was able to drop it in the basket right there. He just, you just look at him, Cam, and he just seems comfortable in the pocket. And he, he, he's not overreacting. He doesn't have those happy feet. He's quick to set his feet and fire when, whenever he needs to. If you're watching for the first time tonight, stay tuned for halftime. The SFL Today halftime report will have highlights from all the games this week, all the teams in action. That passes. Oh, it's fumbled and picked up by San Antonio. You've got to be kidding me. Fumbled oh. by, and Mark Chance picks it up. No way. Are we going to get a chance to... Let's see if he this is this an actual catch? I, Did he have I, the ball long enough, Cam? I think so. I, it he, is close. He made a move down the field. And are we gonna get a challenge? 
Yes, we are. Yeah. So Alaska will save the two-minute ID for just a moment. That was unbelievable. San Alaska's got to be thinking, what the heck do we got to do here? Yeah, As these receivers, the case of the droppies tonight. Uh, and oh, you got to like the awareness by the defender there, number 44, able to scoop that ball and take off with it, get him some valuable yards here close to halftime. Now, the official, you got to watch the coaches here, and Alaska is going to win the challenge. Wow, so what they're a gonna, break for them. Uh, they're going to overturn the call. That's a huge break. This is the two-minute warning on the SFL Network. Well, no, actually, there's 2.04 left on the clock. I have no idea what a catch is anymore, Cam. I don't think a lot of people <laughs> do. Even here in the SFL, we're like, we don't know exactly what constitutes a catch anymore. Second and 10, Cochran, three-step drop, fires, middle, caught, first down. Alaska is going to expose San Antonio there all day if they can get the opportunity. And and I guess there is no two-minute warning. They're running the clock. We're going to do it anyway. This is the two-minute warning on the SFL Network on Twitch. Hi, this is Mighty RX, also known as Max Paul, owner of the Alaska Storm. And you're watching SFL Network on Twitch. So first and 10 at the 41, a minute and a half to go before halftime. Cochran back to pass, a short little out route again to Robert Merrill. He's been eating him alive in the possession game. That's his fifth catch, second down and four coming up. Yes, yeah, smart, veteran savvy right there to get out of bounds, stop the clock, don't waste the timeout. Uh, you're inching closer and closer to the red zone and those possessions, especially with just a minute 26 left, means so much. So, Cochran out of the gun on second and four. San Antonio trying not to break here. Play action, Cochran flips it outside, caught again. Optimus Klein, first down to the 29. And it, Alaska must have seen something on film. They must have realized that they weren't gonna beat San Antonio deep. Yeah, they've been, they've been really successful on this drive, attacking the middle of the field and attacking on those out routes to the outside. And they have just been inching and inching their way closer to the end zone. You get a feeling that they have built a lot of momentum here. Let's see if they can uh, you know, succeed where they have failed so far. If you're new, join our Discord community. We'll see you on the field as that pass is short of the outside again to Merrill. No huddle now. T. Hale 91, I try way too hard. The original Frostbite, Gooner Bear 94, VTAC, many others in the chat. Second down and eight, 108 to go in the first. Uh, first half, that is, six to six. A battle of star kickers so far. Flip outside, nobody there initially, and a nice open field tackle to keep the clock moving. That was, I believe, Jared Olson. And it's third and four. And Cochran again, got, just got rid of it. Did he get the first down? No, he did not. Great open field tackle by Larry Jordan as Como comes up short. And now, if you're Alaska, what do you do? Whew. Well, this game has been all about field goals, Cam. They may try to get them off sides here, but I take the points. And that was a tremendous tackle by the non-contract linebacker to bring that receiver down just uh, shy of the sticks. The defense has been outstanding by San Antonio keeping this close. We're just waiting for one of these offenses to erupt. With a 36-yard field goal from Alaska, the kick is good. And our kickers tonight, our star kickers, are five for five. They are putting on a show. Yeah, these guys, uh, they've got those contracts for a reason. They are clutch, and they are the best that the SFL has to offer. But you know what, Cam? I wish I hadn't seen as much as we've seen of them so far in the first half. <laughs> hey, at least hey. it's at least it's a close game, brother. That's true, man. Uh, and to go back on that fourth down play, what a wonderful job by the guys in the van. The camera was right down the line. We were we were able to just uh, we were able to exactly see how short he was. Those guys in the van don't get enough credit. Corner on a return. He's not going anywhere. Really nice tackle by Jose Galliano. It'll be at the 23 for San Antonio. 38 seconds. They do have two timeouts. Alaska has all three. The upcoming broadcast schedule starts Saturday. Atlanta, London, pivotal game out of the Eastern Conference. Highlights the slate, along with Fan Night and Tallahassee Queen City, rematch of a uh, contest earlier this year where Tallahassee 
had no problem, just like they've had all year long. 38 seconds to go for San Antonio. Langdon straight back, fires it out to Silver. Silver had some room in the open field, but two receivers. There's no no huddle, there's no timeouts. I think San Antonio pretty content with how they played, but they've got to be concerned about uh, not getting any points on their own. Two field goals off of picks. Yeah, these two offenses have been super conservative uh, after really slinging the ball uh, for, for long deflections uh, in their first series. Uh, we want to see the offense definitely open up here in the second half. Langdon going to sneak it, and he got the first down and a timeout called with the, with, at the 34-yard line. <laughs> And uh, that time it really <laughs> fooled Alaska. And yeah. San Antonio's trying everything tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, it fooled, I think it just fooled everybody watching. I mean, uh, to run a sneak, quarterback sneak down the middle of the field on your side of the field, uh, I normally just don't want to put your quarterback in that kind of position. You don't want to get him knocked out of the game. The SFL today is coming up next here at the half. Break down how expansion teams are doing, and we'll show all the highlights from week six as Langdon will fire on the last play of the half. He'll dump it off to Silver. Silver's going the wrong way. And that is a bizarre way to end the first half at 9-6. to six. And we'll get out of here for the 2K Sports Halftime Report. Before we go to the SFL Today studios, this is the SFL Network presented by APM Music on Twitch. Time. We're going to go right to the SFL Today studios. Thank you, 2K, for the every <laughs> once in a while glitch. You're watching the SFL Network on Twitch, 9 to 6. We're coming right back. Coming up next on the SFL Today Halftime Show, we'll have a major announcement uh, for the league. Uh, we will have an update on how our expansion teams are doing across the league. And we'll have the Week 6 highlight reel. You won't want to miss that. I'll be doing it live. No script. High octane. We'll see what I say. We'll be on the other side of the break in 60 seconds. SFL presents the SFL Today Halftime Show. Welcome into the Halftime Show studios. Cameron Irvine, Stephen Mullinex. Let's wind down from an exciting first half. Let's talk a little expansion, Stephen. First, we got a, first off, we had four new teams join the league this year. 
and all of them are having some pretty awesome success. If you're just joining us here in the last couple of minutes, uh, Alaska leads San Antonio at the half, nine to six. First, the Tulsa Desperados, Stephen. Yeah, just uh, wonderful out of the gate. This guy here, uh, Dion Hawkins, obviously been in the league a long time, uh, was a, a coach for uh, a Chicago team that went to the championship game, and he's proven his worth as, a, as, as an owner of his own franchise, come out of the gate 6-0. and oh. Charles Ball leads the league in interceptions with eight. Jeffrey Deserve, their most active player, and they are the top expansion team since season four. That's over three wow. years worth of expansion teams right. along the way. So what Tulsa's doing, nothing short of exceptional. How about the San Francisco Sharks? They basically won three games in a row, uh, lost a game on a fake field goal to Tulsa, uh, but otherwise have been very strong. They beat Houston yesterday. Yeah, and did you expect anything less from ex-NFL player Ryan Motes? You know, uh, he, after a slow start, he was going to get up to speed pretty quickly, and uh, so far he has. And, uh, and, and all of these expansion teams have been really competitive so far. Gabriel Manning, sixth in the league in receiving yards for the London Knights. They suffered a loss yesterday, uh, but uh, London's looked pretty good. They're 3-3 three and three this season. Led by Slynn Shady, who leads the league in tackles. Yeah, this this Knights team has a formidable defense, one of the best in the SFL, and I think that's really how they've they put their mark on the league uh, entering it. But uh, yeah, the 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 London Knights are uh, glad to have uh, someone from across the pond in the league. And finally, the new kids on the block, the Indianapolis Red Devils. They got the win yesterday. They're also three. And three, that high-octane offense. Been up and down this season, but considering that Indy is an expansion team, the Red Devils holding their own third place in the Central right now. Yeah, and it, and it seems like they've been in every game. You know, they, they, they haven't been uh, usually blown out. They, they, they're they very competitive, as are all of these teams. Just so surprising. You know, normally we get some of these, these, these first-time owners come in the league, and they struggle a little bit to understand what it is to play our game. Uh, but these guys, because of their past history, because of their association with some of the greatest owners in our league, they've been, in a, been able to come in and have great success early. So the expansion teams have been so great for this league. Why don't we have some more? Ooh. Huh, Stephen? Why don't, hey. why don't we do that? Why don't we add, why don't we add one team next season? Why don't, why, Just, don't we go to, why don't we go to 19? You see anything wrong with 19? Seems like an odd number. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe we better go to twenty. Should we go to twenty? I mean, you could, uh, but I think we could do more. You think we could do more? Uh, what? How about one more? What if? How about we go to twenty-one teams in season Ooh. eleven? How does that sound good? Sounds amazing. Three, three conferences of seven teams, twenty-one teams. It hmm. extends the regular season by two weeks. And, and, and any of that? Any of that sound and sexy, Stephen? I don't know. You know, I don't know if there'd be anybody interested in owning their own team here in this league. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's false. Expansion applications <laughs> will open up in a few weeks. We will detail that on simulationfl.net. Last season, we had 60% of the people that applied didn't get in. Um, and, uh, and this season, we expect a lot of those teams, to, we want them to reapply. We want them to still be in it and if you've never applied to be an SFL owner um, uh, please uh, throw your hat in the ring and let's see what you got um, lots of applications to come in lots of big things happening in season 11 including a 21 team simulation football league coming up wow. Stephen uh, with that said and with that excitement let's go to the highlights shall we let's do it week number six in the SFL, well, that that didn't work. Let's uh, <laughs> let's try let's try that again. My God. Well, um, wait, hey, just excited about these this, this expansion announcement. It's gonna take a little bit for the computer to get over it. Yeah, holy uh, holy bonkers. Let's uh, let's let's fix that, huh? Let's no fix problem. that, shall we? Hey, excited about these new expansion teams. You know what cities? Are they going to be what? What mascots? What's what's their logo going to be like? Uh, and if you have never applied for a team, don't think that you can. If you're brand new and you've never seen the SFL before before tonight, uh, hey, that doesn't preclude you from not 
applying. We've had first timers get teams. Uh, but the important thing is to get involved as quickly as you can. Get with the team. Create your player. Uh, you know, get involved in the coaching. Get involved in the commentary. Somehow just get involved in this league. There are so many opportunities for guys out there to join what I believe is uh, something really rare and special. Uh, like we said, the first controllerless competitive esport in the world. You want to get involved now because it's only getting better. All right, Stephen, you ready to do this? Let's do it. Let's do this. Highlights from week number six. Here they are. St. Louis traveled to Sioux Falls this week. The three and two Gladiators and the three and two Sparrows. Late in the first half, this is a St. Louis touchdown to the corner. Elijah Swaim tapping the toes in. That was back-to-back -to -back touchdowns for St. Louis. 13-13 to -13 was the score. And uh, then disaster struck for the Gladiators. Levant Ooh. Irvine with the pick six. Yes, with the pick six making it happen. And Sioux Falls would end up winning the game 34-31. to 31. Sioux Falls improves to 4-2, and they moved up the ladder on the playoff rankings. Mexico City at Tallahassee as we're getting the music fired up. Saturday Night Football, Tallahassee wearing their throwbox, throwbacks. Hey, Ken Gossett's pretty good. He got yet another touchdown in this game. It was a bit of an off night for Tallahassee, but they got some big clutch performances from some big time players. Anthony Wyo flying in, give me that! Takes it away from the diving defender. Tallahassee rolls 31 to 20. Queen City at Atlanta. The four time champions taking on the swarm. These games are always good. 14 0 Queen City, and Damar Woods flat took over. Jay Franz, the big Franz man, all the way down the field scores, and Atlanta's up. But don't wait. Well, hold on now. Hold on. Atlanta's not done yet because. Just two minutes later, it's a free play, and Woods is going long again. Boo, Chisholm, and we're tied at 14. Just the start of the second half. Give Queen City a chance to breathe. Give me a chance to breathe. Just hand the ball off to me. It'll just be a short little play, and then a juke, and then a spin, and then get on the big screen, young fella. BDG Hollywood taking it all the way. Atlanta scores 21 unanswered and wins 24 to 17 to improve to three and three on the season. Hollywood says, hey, you see me. London at Indianapolis, the ninth circle in Indiana. The battle of two expansion teams. And this pass from uh, Nathan Lee is going to Eli McCormick and he is going to tap those feet down the sideline. How did he not go out of bounds? Indianapolis scores and goes up 7-0. Just when you think London's getting it back together. In the third quarter, the Knights are driving. Down 24-7. Michael Martin back in the end zone. Get London back in it. No. Michael v tap takes it away and seals it. Red Devils, they improve. The 3-3, three 31-14. Three, Chicago hosting Oklahoma City. And this game was all about number 17. Pendo Gilbert. Four receivers, E.T. King throws it number one to Kendall Gilbert, tapping the feet in the back of the end zone, doing a little dance like his mom taught him. E.T. King now out of the gun with five wide. Where's he going? Is it to Gilbert? You know it's to Gilbert. Kendall Gilbert's got another one. 14 nothing in the first quarter, and Gilbert's going to get up, and he's going to do some more dancing with him. Uh, it was PG-13. E.T. King, pump bank, now steps up in the pocket, finds Gilbert again just before the half. Chicago's won two in a row. They bloodbathed Oklahoma City, 49-23. San Francisco hosting Houston. And what a wild game this was. Warren Murray, third quarter from his own two. Get out! Warren Murray, 58 yards, 68 yards, 78 yards, do the math. Even Warren Murray's exhausted. Ninth, eight yard touchdown. And that was about the only highlight for Houston. Gabriel Manning, injuries to the fullback and the running back. So the wide receiver says, you know what? I'll do it myself. First wide receiver in SFL history to 
record a rushing touchdown, and San Francisco pulls the stutter over Houston, 35 to 20. To Canada, oh Canada Field, where the Rip winless Roughnecks took on Vancouver. Major key with a major pick. First of his career, one-handed grab just two minutes into the game. Tom Pepper had a couple of passing touchdowns. This one to Jeremy Vega in Vancouver. Gets the victory, albeit a low scoring contest, 23 to seven and all. How did you forget one of the craziest second halves in SFL history? Tulsa and Carolina. Start of the second half. Here come the Desperados. And Charles Paul is going to fumble. The ball's out, and it's picked up by a big ugly. And Carolina's going the other way. But just a couple of minutes later, on the same possession, Carolina hands it off to A.J. Francis. And Francis cops it up. Tulsa recovers, still up by seven. Fast forward. 20 to 13, here comes Phoenix, going to March strike, and that's a strike for six. Plus the extra point, we're tied at 20. And then, oh my goodness, Sir Charles Robinson avoids a sack on a Hail Mary. You've got to be kidding me. Quadruple coverage, Corey Jones. Tulsa scores and stays undefeated at 6-0. 27 to 20. Are we ready for the second half of action or what, Stephen? Wake up! Hey, man, you are the greatest Cameron Irvine. You've got, man, this was amazing, this replay call. Dude, you're a man for the reason. That was, that was awesome. This has been the SFL Today Halftime Show. And we're back. San Antonio after these messages. Woo! The Simulation Football League Dude, is presented by APM right Music now. and is the official theme music provider of the SFL. Listen to their Champions Will Rise soundtrack at apmmusic.com today and search through thousands of tracks to boost the quality of your stream just like us. APM Music, production music library and custom music house. Back to the game on the field. Welcome back to San Antonio. 9-6 is the score. And we're getting started here in the second half. Alaska is going to get the ball to start the second half. And Robert Merrill will spin up to the 25-yard line. And now we got to follow up of what's been an epic week six, a great first half with a good second half here, Stephen. Yeah, this is the best that the West has to offer. This is the number one, number two teams in the Western Conference, and they're proving why. Just a defensive uh, smash-mouth type game, 9-6 to six here. Let's see if these offenses can open up a little bit. Three receivers, two backs in the backfield, and Cochran's pass is off the kneecap of the intended receiver, Jose Galeano. And it's second down and 10 in the... Uh, Drops or close drops continue for that was another drop. I swear, Alaska is taking people out of the stands and putting them in uniform and putting them on the field. <laughs> Some of these guys have never heard of, and they've got them out there trying to make these catches. Uh, it's, it's been a 50-50 proposition so far. Three receivers for Alaska, two to the left. 10.53 to go in the third quarter. Second down and 10. Back to pass Cochran. Cochran fires to the outside. And staying in bounds. That's a pickup of eight to Como. Como's got five catches in this game. And I got to be honest with you, Stephen. This is this is all live. I'm, I'm, at, I'm a little out of breath. Yeah, well, the, take a break. That was a <laughs> awesome, I, 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 maybe the best halftime show that we've ever had. That was so good and really highlights this league and how awesome this league is. 
Third down and two at the 34. 10.23 to go in the third, back to pass. Cochran again flips it outside, and San Antonio is willing to give those up. It's not the sexiest brand of football. You yeah. see Clifton gets the first down, but eventually somebody's going to make that critical second half adjustment that we see so often. You got to hope so. I mean, like you said, it's not the most attractive football, but it is, it is you know, this keeping this game close. Uh, I'm just surprised that they've gone to Como nine times. Three receivers, two off the left. Back to pass. Cochran outside, caught. Second and five coming at the 44. That's Como again. Wow. It's been his game to shine, and, uh, you know, he's caught more than half of his targets. But, again, where's Merrill? Where's Optimus Klein? These are the guys that have been busting up this league and have been at the forefront of Alaska at 5-0. and Cochran's pass caught first down at the 48-yard line. That is Optimus Klein. And this is even uh, more conservative than we saw out of Alaska in the first half. <laughs> They're really playing it close to the vest here on this opening drive of the third, and it's working. Yeah, it's it, the thing is it's it's effective, uh, but you just it just it just seems like it's just some, waiting for something to happen. Whether the defense needs to make a big play or the offense needs to make a big big play, we need to see more of those chunk plays that we haven't seen in the first half. First and ten of the 48, back to pass. Cochran again flips it outside, pass caught and stiff arm, shoving Warner. It looked like out of bounds. Optimus Klein. There's the updated numbers. Joey Langdon with just 47 passing yards tonight and not much on the ground either but yet san antonio is very much in this game yeah and and those 47 passing yards probably all went to the running back i mean it's been that kind of conservative game on both sides of the ball uh, these are strong defenses and these guys know that and they are being very careful you know if you've got Con uh, cochran there with two interceptions uh he may be a little gun shy at this point Back to Pat. No, they're going to hand it off to Nordellis. Nordellis does well to pick up a yard out of the 39 yard line. Firebird 586 said it right in the chat. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Fi uh, 586, <laughs> Dags 83, VTAC, Ufish 87, Iceman Gervin, uh, Turfluff 100, 100, 100. Uh, some, uh, some very interesting, uh, I don't know, looks German username. Hello, hello 703. I should have called you that from the beginning. Dante West. Iceman Gervin, many others in the champ Vancouver Legion. Third down and one from the 39. 835 to go in the third. Back to pass Cochran. Cochran going to flip it out to Nordellis. Perfect play call. First down as San Antonio was bringing some heat. Yeah, is it any wonder that Alaska is number one in third down conversion? They've just been going down the field, methodically going down the field. You know, they're just taking exactly what the defense has given them, and they're throwing a lot to that running back and that non-stars is doing just enough to get him past the sticks. 8.25 to go in the third, a 4-3 look for San Antonio. They have brought some pressure tonight. Back to pass, four-man rush again. Cochran just going to flip it outside and pick up seven. And, you know, I think San Antonio, is if they are not giving up touchdowns doing this, they're probably saying, look, it's eventually one of our guys is going to break something deep. I've really been surprised that we've not seen more out of Anderson Silver tonight yeah um the defense is playing back there they're allowing these short passes but as we get closer to the red zone that defense is going to come packed and they're going to have an opportunity there to try to make a play near the goal line cochran's pass caught first down 2018 optimus klein is starting to get moving there's that critical stat but alaska is winning and now in the red zone yeah, they're allowing. That's that. Well, there you don't. That's one guy you don't want to get hot. I mean, that guy can change the game in one play, especially with the, the score this tight. So, you don't want to see him get hot if you're San Antonio. Cochran again out to the fullback. Granite. Granite makes a move. Granite's got a nice spin move for a big fella. Picks up six out to the 12, and we're we're just kind of sitting on pins and needles here. So are the fans just uh, waiting for the. Vaccaro's defense to make an adjustment here or for Alaska to make another mistake. Hey, and if you're in the chat and you got a call out, you got your name called out here on the Twitch front page, hey, man, show us some bits, baby. How about some bit love? Love me some bits. 
Love me some bits. 7.05 to go in the third. They're going to hand it off. Nordellis going to be stopped in the backfield. Third and seven. A loss of a few. And that is Bailey Baca making his first critical play of this contest. But he's applied some pressure a couple of times here early on. Yeah, Alaska doesn't run the ball much. But uh, San Antonio well prepared uh, for that little wrinkle in the game plan. Fully expect to pass here on third and seven. 6.38 to go in the third. Back to pass, Cochran. Cochran fires. Nearly intercepted. And that's what San Antonio was hoping. I dare you to get into a third and long situation and throw it past 10 yards because we are not going to give you anything. And San Antonio's defense does it again. Well, again, they said that defense is getting squeezed back on that goal line. And there are just so many defenders now in the secondary that Alaska, is, the quarterback's going to have to be pinpoint accurate in order to get the ball through all of those uh, defensive hands. All the newbies out there, show us some love. We're just a, uh, we're just a fledgling, uh, hopeful uh, esports entity that uh, believes we got an awesome product. And if you're enjoying the product tonight, uh, then uh, subscribe to our channel. Make sure you get the updates. Um, uh, donate some bits if you so choose. Um, we'd love uh, any contribution you can give. And it really uh, helps put a fuel in the fire, a pep in the step. Uh, what, did, what did you say? Easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, out, of the, uh, out of the SFL here. Uh, I, had to, I had to bring it up again, Stephen. Well, we should be. We should have done bits for field goals, uh, <laughs> or some kind of a drinking game for field goals, because that's all we've seen here tonight. We got. We need to see a little action out of these boys. That kick five yards deep in the end zone, and Warner brings it out to the 24. Nicholas Warner, one of the newer players on this Vaquero strong, uh, squad at Strong Safety. Well, if you're joining us for the first time, what is the SFL? We are the first controllerless competitive esport in the world. Off the field, real life users like you create, customize, and shape their very own football player's career every step of the way. On the field, hands free gaming built on team strategy, strengths, and weaknesses allows anything and everything to happen. There's a flag on the play, and that is dumped off to Silver, and he's not going to get much there. And uh, they'll gladly accept the penalty on Alaska and move the ball forward. Yeah, that's just not good quarterback awareness there. If uh, you know you have the free play, why not take a shot? deep down the field they'll take the five yards and gladly do so but man these offenses have been really hesitant tonight true shot collar with 100 bits Ufish oh. 87 with six uh the last of the bits and mighty rx just a lot of faces and a lot of number ones not sure how many uh that is i think it may be 10 or 12 12 for the uh, 12 points on the board 555 to go in the third Cameron Irvine, Stephen Mullinex here with you. 12-6 Alaska. Langdon out to Silver. This time has a lot of room. And Silver is going to be short of the first down. Ryan Davidson with the tackle. So for those watching at home for the first time tonight, Stephen, this isn't just the AI or the artificial intelligence, right, of what we do uh, calling a bad game. This, this is strategy built by these two coaching staffs as to how to best a, a formulate an attack against these, uh, these two uh, awesome defenses, and we'll get your thoughts on that in a moment as Langdon's going to throw again on second and inches, and Silver, well, they're going to call it incomplete. Boy, that is a gift because it looked like he had three feet in bounds, um, and uh, that's that's the third time on the sideline a call has gone San Antonio's way. Anyway, back to the uh, back to Yeah, the some funky sideline work by the stripes tonight. I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, rarely does it does it help you out. It, it actually did there for San Antonio. Uh, but, yeah, Cam, these are – look, it, it may be AI on the field, but uh, this there goes there's a lot of planning and time and player progression and scouting that goes into these game plans. Langdon down the field, stood Ooh. tall in the pocket. I thought for sure they were going to run the ball. Jimmy Givens, the non-contract tight end, makes the play, and that's another – new face to the broadcast tonight yeah excellent ball placement here right in his hands and again another guy from the stands cam never heard of these guys and we've got them on both sides of the ball making plays wish they'd make a little bit more but that's one that maybe 
get San Antonio Dolphins going a little bit here. San Antonio has been relying on Joey Langdon much of the night. Langdon going to sneak it, and Langdon picks up two. We've seen three sneaks tonight out of Joey Langdon. Our next key date is the front page game of the uh, Wild Card Wednesday. Wednesday, March 28th here on Twitch. 4.35 to go in the third. Wild Card Wednesday, new to the league this year. So happy to be on Twitch, and uh, I think we're, we're bringing them a unique product, and we're glad to, to uh, showcase what we do here. Langdon on second and eight, fires it outside. That's another catch for a fullback, picks up two. I have seen more catches, Francis on the nice tackle, seen more catches out of non-contract players tonight than I think I've seen in any game all season. A critical third down and six coming up for San Antonio. Four minutes and counting in the third. The Vaqueros are hanging around in a game that has featured nothing but kicks. Back to pass Langdon. Langdon checked out, going the wrong way. He did not get the first down. Daly Hornish thought he saw something on the other side of the field. He would have had it. Yeah, this, this is uh, unfortunately, this is nothing new here in the SFL. We've seen some of those plays where the receiver just tries to make something happen and all he really needed to do was just drop down where he caught the ball and that would have been a first down instead the wide receiver tries to make a couple of spin moves tries to uh, you know break this game open and it cost his, his, his team the series well the star punter Arminius Davis for the first time tonight is going to pin Alaska inside the five yard line the best punter in SFL history and boy did he he Corner coughing that little kick right there. As soon as it hit the ground, got that spin on the ball, and it just popped straight in the air. And nice play by the defender there, uh, the, the, the special teamer, to grab the ball. We've seen a lot of those guys run into the end zone. Nice to just keep on his feet there. 314 to go in the third. Alaska's up 12-6. They're going to hand it off on it. Oh, right into the teeth of the defensive tackle, Bill Lett for San Antonio. That was like... Uh, a family hug there at a family reunion. I mean, he was just, he was right there to greet him at the door. Yeah, we've heard a meeting of the minds. That was a meeting of the brawn right there. And that run, that running back ran into a wall. Both, and, uh, go ahead. Boy, no, go ahead. Both uh, defenses have been nasty tonight. Second and 10 of the five. Outside, Nordellis, nothing. Smacked down by Larry Jordan, only a gain of one. There's the updated quarterback numbers, and it ain't pretty. But these defenses have a lot to do with that. Another third and long for Alaska. You know, and I think the word is on both sides of the ball here offensively is settle. These guys are, these offenses are just settling for what the defense is giving them, and they're not giving them very much. Yeah, they're going to hand it off again, and that's going to be a three and out. Talk about settling. Alaska feels so uh, not confident in throwing past 10 yards tonight. That Sanford, or that San Antonio defense has been absolutely lethal that they'd rather punt it away, and now the punt is uh, not looking so bad for San Antonio after the mistake from Hornish. And, they're, and they're, it's almost as if they're waiting for the other side to make a mistake. This game is so close, the score is so close, uh, that, that both offenses don't feel like they have to do more than what they're doing. San Antonio's got a golden opportunity here. They're going to have the ball in Alaska territory to start for the third time tonight. Each of the last two times they've had the ball in Alaska territory, uh, they have scored field goals. A word from the SFL. Don't miss the SFL podcast every Saturday night at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern on Twitch before the league's weekend slate get kicked off. Join me, Mighty RX, defending champion team owner Ramos Lynn, and our host, Jack Brown, to break down all the headlines in the SFL. Langdon back to pass on a first and 10, fires it out to Silver, pickup of six. Uh, Steven, you're a coach in this league. Uh, are, are you surprised at uh, what San Antonio has done offensively just with the lack of running? You got Alex Dominguez up front. Um, are, are you just, uh, what do you, what's your take on the strategy here? Uh, well, I understand it. I understand that uh, they're just trying to take Dominguez and this Alaska defensive line, they're trying to take them out of the game. Uh, they're going to quick passes, they're going to the running back, the screens, the swings, anything to get the ball out quick. Pass caught. How did Joey Langdon 
get that ball inside to Daly Hornish, his fourth catch. That may have been his best pass of the night. Yeah, absolutely. This guy here uh, feels the blitz, is able to find his receiver down the field and provide a, an accurate ball. He delivers that ball with a lot of touch. First and 10 of the 24, outside Silver, nothing. Anderson Silver, who coming into the game had back-to-back 100-yard -back performances, is roped up again by uh, Ryan Davidson. Yeah, they're, they're using them. They're just using them in the passing game instead of the running game. And uh, with the, Dominguez and Big Sexy there, you understand why. I just think they've gone to him just far too much and not looked down the field enough. Four wide receivers for Langdon on second and ten nearly intercepted as Anderson Silver makes yet another catch. Third down and eight, but that was dangerous. That could have busted this game wide open. You start making those same play calls over yep. and over again. You're getting predictable, and this defense is going to start cheating up and try to snatch that ball out of the air. Almost happened right there. Third and eight, final play of the third quarter, and Langdon throws a slant for a first down of the 11. What a play to Julian Marshall, and that is the end of the third quarter. Alaska 12, San Antonio 6. What a game. Shout out to Lyric Da Vinci, old school SFL in the chat, trying to join back up. Jason 1347, Black Star 1014, Dags 83, many others in the chat. Over 200 of you watching. First and 10 at the 11. Langdon straight back again. It is he through, and it almost rolled off the back and into somebody's hands. That was Nate Bryant, the linebacker, getting pressure up front. Yeah, it did. did. Just hit him right as he was uh, letting the ball go. Uh, lucky, really lucky there that that wasn't a fumble, but uh, enough momentum uh, on the pass there to, to call it incomplete, but very close. So here we go. Second and 10, four wide from the Alaska 11. Langdon outside, turning the corner to the six. That's Kyle Scott. No, check that. That's Ricardo. Hernandez, his first catch of the night, the contract tight end. I'm, I'm getting lost. This has got to be at least 20 different people that have caught a pass tonight. Yeah, and, and, and he just took a little bit too much time to gather oh, no. himself. He had an opportunity there to, to make a play towards the goal line, uh, but good to hold on to the ball, but still five yards here. We're going to need for first down, six and a half, four touchdowns. Here we go, third down and five at the six. Langdon, three-step drop, slings it inside. Oh, it's incomplete. What a hit. What a hit in the back of the end zone. Pass intended for Hornish. He got obliterated. Wow. Very close, Cam. Uh, if you're the wide receiver and it hits your hands, totally expect him to catch that ball. But a great play by the defender to knock it out. Boy, do you expect anything less in this defensive battle, Cam? Antonio Flowerglass will come out to kick another field goal. I don't think that we've had a game with nothing but field goals in at least three or four seasons. Uh, this is, and considering as that a hold was almost disastrous, the field goal is good from 23 yards on a terrible hold. Uh, but, uh, you know, considering that Alaska is scoring 31 points a game coming in, Right. Uh, this is this has been a shocker. And it hasn't totally been inept offense. Obviously, there's been some of that, but there have been opportunities like right there to score, and it's just been excellent defense. So, you know, if you love defensive football, this is your kind of game. Robert Merrill from one yard deep in his end zone on the return from left to right up to the 23, 10, 28 to go in the fourth quarter. Man, 12 to 9, Alaska on top, and we would have never seen this coming. Yeah, to, to tell us that not a single touchdown has been scored uh, now 10 minutes into the fourth quarter, I wouldn't have believed you. So 10 28 to go in the fourth, Alaska protecting a three point lead, San Antonio all over them. Three step drop now outside. And the pass hauled in for a four-yard pickup by Nordellis. 
I can't remember the last time we saw a team throw the ball more than 20 yards. I mean, this is this is unbelievable. Second and six. And this is, uh, I you know, for Vancouver. I've, I, I'm, 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 excuse me, not Vancouver. I'm San Antonio, the Vaqueros. I'm used to seeing them go downfield. Alaska, they have had a tendency to, to throw to the running back a, a little bit more. Just, man, it's just been a massive on both sides just, just, just to go around here. Cochran going to throw outside, deep out, a little bit deeper. That's complete to Merrill, who's been the primary target tonight. Picks up a first down to the 38. And just a nice play call, a nice ball delivered here by Cochran. Again, standing strong in the pocket. Pocket delivers a confident ball. He's a confident passer, Cam, although... You know, he's, he's he's had a couple of mistakes tonight. Well, to be fair, Cochran's, I don't even think either one of them was his fault. Uh, with the, I can't believe Optimus Klein. That's the best chance we've had at a deep pass play, and he yeah. dropped it right off well, his he hands. Did have to, he had to dive for it, so it wasn't yeah, that's, exactly on point, but he should have came down. Cochran over the middle, picks up six. That's Optimus Klein, second and four at the 44. The time is ticking away, and Alaska says, look, I don't care if we don't throw – Deep down the field, the whole rest of the game, we got the lead, and the clock is running. Yeah, the pressure's on San Antonio. Alaska has the ball. They can take their time. You know, this previous drive, they did. They they took their time and just kind of uh, matriculated it down the field, as the old saying goes, and they seem very comfortable to continue doing so. Hand off, Nordellis. Got a first down. That is clutch for the non-contract running back as Alaska picks up the first. Yeah, it almost makes you want to have a non-contact running back because this guy has played well tonight. Uh, when he's called, when his number's been called, he's come through a lot of times. First and 10 at the 49, 8.40 to go in the fourth. Empty backfield for Cochran. Cochran throwing another short out. Pass caught, broken tackle, 35, down to the 33-yard line. That's got to be the first broken tackle in, uh, God, Lee, forever. Yeah, and that's that's I think that's what Alaska's been waiting for. They've been making these short out uh, uh, routes. They've been connecting on those and waiting for their wide receiver to make a play. And he saw one there, and it, it nearly well, well with their kicker. This is field goal range. Jose Galliano with yet another catch. The non-contract receiver making a play. Three receivers, two backs in the backfield for Alaska. San Antonio's got to come up with something. Cochran back to pass. Cochran again. Short out route caught for a pickup of four yards to Como. So you got to think, Steven, somebody at some point is going to jump one of these routes. Yeah, you'd think so. And again, you know, this is San Antonio's defense in this in particular case. They're playing back. You know, they're, they're, they want to totally eliminate the deep threat. And they've done a good job of that. And, uh, you know, it's only a three-point game. Three receivers out of the gun for Cochran. Cochran back to pass, going middle. Caught! First down to the 17. Just got there before Nicholas Warner. I was just about to say, oh, be, you better be careful, Ron. But uh, Alaska's in the red zone in San Antonio right now. they they got to hold him to three. It's just like they, they keep poking the bear. You keep poking the bear. And so far, it hasn't hurt him too much. I mean, look, we've seen tip passes up in the air. We've seen interceptions. And Alaska's still on top. Two receivers for the Storm, both at the bottom of the screen. Cochran to throw. Cochran middle again, wide open, caught. Near a first down, Optimus Klein to the seven. But this is where San Antonio's defense has tightened up. Yeah, absolutely. They, they haven't allowed, neither defense is allowed a touchdown tonight. If they can get one here with just uh, under seven minutes here in the fourth, they could take real control of this game. San Antonio and their fans begging for a stop here. Give the offense another shot. 6.42 to go in the fourth. Play action, Cochran. Cochran gets it away. Pass. Oh, it's picked in the end zone. 15, 20, 30. Off the deflection. Midfield. You've got to be kidding me. Nicholas Warner. He is going to score. Touchdown, San Antonio! Oh my goodness! Oh, oh my goodness, Cam! This game has just been blown up! B.J. Armstrong had the pick six! It's his second interception of the night, his third in two games, and this one, one of the best so far this season! 
102 yard defensive touchdown. What a return, what a play. How clutch is that? B.J. Armstrong now has three interceptions in two weeks. Charles Hu over in Tulsa. B.J. Armstrong has given the Vaqueros the lead on the most improbable of plays, and I just had to let the voice, I, I, I couldn't do it anymore. Hey, that kid got true predator mentality, and boy, did the Vaqueros need it. This play's going nuts right now. Another bad hold, but the extra point is good. 6.27 to go in the fourth, and <laughs> San Antonio is on top. Unbelievable. The dynamic of this game has just flip-flopped Cam, and San Antonio now has a four-point lead. That means Alaska is going to need to get in the end zone, something they haven't done all night. A lot of time left. This is the excitement that we all talk about. 6.27 to go in the fourth, just like that. A game can turn on its head and bust open now. Alaska is in trail mode, and we'll see if that affects the play calling with 6.23 to go in the fourth. I cannot believe 102 yard interception return on the front page. That's absolutely awesome. And you know what? A defensive game like this deserves that kind of defensive play. Not a single offensive touchdown scored yet. <laughs> Unbelievable. Cochran to throw, and that pass caught short. And if you're Alaska, I mean, you can't panic. You just kind of keep doing what got you all the way down the field. They just can't get in the end zone. Yeah, I don't think their game plan is changing quite yet because of they still have six minutes here to get something done. Uh, but, you know, at some point, they're going to have to throw out that conservative game plan because they just can't afford it. 5.55 to go in the fourth. Hand off North Dallas, and he's blasted. Obi Okoye. When was the last time you heard his name tonight? Everything's been to the outside, and Okoye has been basically ineffective. Third and six. Hey, you don't think that this San Antonio defense is jacked right now? Third and six, an opportunity to get their offense back on the field big play right here five wide for alaska cochran changing the play at the line third down and six turning the corner didn't get there fourth and one for alaska they're gonna have to punt wow yeah, I, hey nothing but green in front of him but his momentum takes him out of bounds hey man put the ball out over the line get that first down for your team understand the situation Boy, that's, that's bad luck right there for Alaska. Saving 24-7. Welcome to Twitch, buddy. Glad to hear you thought this was real because it's real to hundreds of people involved in this league. June Tutu punts it away from the 38-yard line. A fair catch called for by Nicholas Warner. B.J. Armstrong, the 36 and the 38 were so close together. Uh, it was hard to see who got the pick six there initially. Um, okay. But uh, B.J. Armstrong, potentially the hero of San Antonio's season. Absolutely. And there Absolutely. are the playoff, finally, there oh, are the hey. playoff standings. San Antonio fifth coming into the night. Alaska is third. First and 10 at the 38. Langdon back to pass, and he'll flip it outside to Daly Holder. First time we've seen Holder in a long time. That picks up five, and let's put the standings back up there. Yeah, you don't think this is huge for San Antonio right now? I mean, this could have absolute playoff implications. They can get one over and beat an undefeated Alaska. Uh, who knows what's going to happen, but this could be a huge win in the Vaquero season. Second and five of the 42. San Antonio trying to knock off the unbeaten storm with 4.58 to go on a 102-yard interception return for a touchdown. Langdon out to Silver. Silver needs a block. Got a spin. Got a block. Silver down the side. 40, 35, down to the 28-yard line. What a play for Silver. Tobin makes the stop. Yeah, and what a playmaker. What a playmaker move right there. The excellent spin makes up for the blocker there that, that's going to miss that man and the blocker moves Boom. to the second level and silver's gone but you gotta love that steven 
The offensive lineman knows he's not going to get the initial block. He's just not going to get there. So he right. says, hey, Silver, you got to make a play. And he made one that was huge. And don't forget, the clock is so important here. If, if you're Alaska, time is running out. Split backs in the backfield, 422 to go in the fourth. Langdon back to pass, pump fake. Now dumps it off Silver. Silver got a block. 25, 20, breaks a tackle down to the 17-yard line for a first down. All of a sudden, San Antonio has awoken. Hey, man, this kid could make defenders miss in a phone booth. Check out the nice move. Good block. Absolutely awesome block right there by the offensive lineman. And boom, gives him the shoulder. Yeah, he gets a little bit, but man, first down, and this San Antonio right. team is rolling in the red zone. 3.58 to go. Ball at the 17-yard line for San Antonio. Two in the backfield, Joey Langdon changing the play at the line. Alaska jumps offside. Langdon over to Silver, and not much there, but they'll take the penalty. Yeah, again, we talked about just situational awareness. You got a free play there, had an opportunity to go to the end zone, but they are just playing real conservative right now with the with the lead. It's, it's kind of hard to blame them. They want to run this clock. Lyon is called for the penalty. Pierre Lyon, 16-12 San Antonio. An unbelievable game, just an unbelievable turn of events. Here late in the fourth quarter. That's why you can never leave an SFL game. You never know what you're going to get by the time it's over. 3.43 to go in the fourth. 16-12 San Antonio, and they're driving. They have not scored an offensive touchdown tonight. Joey Langdon out to Silver. Silver going nowhere. Lost three. Not going to break that tackle. And you'd like to see Langdon maybe hold on the ball just a little bit more, try to get somebody open in the end zone. Yeah, but Cam, he just, it just seems like he's just not real comfortable Right now in the pocket, right. I don't blame him with big sexy Alex Dominguez across from him. He knows that they, the game plan that they've been working on all week is to get the ball out quick. And and he right now it's just important for him to chew up that clock. 3-10 to go in the fourth. Langdon, second and eight again, out to Silver. He can't, I mean, he's the hot hand right now. He's, he's feeding him, it's third and six. I don't think you can go to him on third and six. You're gonna have to go somewhere else, but Silver's gotten you this far. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I don't like the play call there to the sidelines because it, it stops the clock. Right. If, if you want to run the clock, run the clock. That's fine. Uh, but you can't allow a mental mistake like that. Uh, this, but this is what we've seen from them all night. It's going to be uncharacteristic for them to go long. Receiver to the top of the screen. Langdon on third down and six. Back to pass. Langdon going down the middle. Oh, he dropped it. No. Unbelievable. Daly ho a holder. Oh, my heart. And that's just a lack of concentration, Cam. What an excellent route run by the receiver and, and, and then just to drop the ball looking down at your hands. Yeah, son, you dropped that. And that could have been huge uh, because it, it still makes this a one-score game. That was San Antonio's first drop of the night. And it helps keep Alaska in the game with three minutes to go. This is a 30-yard field goal from Flower Glass. It would be his fourth of the night. We've had eight field goals and a 102-yard interception return for a touchdown. There's been no game like it in the over 600 games played in SFL history. And yeah. here we go with Ron Cochran getting another shot. Every game is a snowflake here in the SFL. It, it, just, it, it, just, it is a, a wonderful present to unwrap. Uh, every night, and we've had some good ones uh, here, Cam, us here together this season. And uh, based on those those uh, replays that we saw at halftime, there's been some wonderful, awesome games that happened over the weekend. So 2.59 to go in the four. This is a deep kick, three yards into the end zone. Merrill on the turn with 24. I still can't believe he dropped that pass. I still can't believe the 102-yard interception. <laughs> I mean, that he just that, that that route that he ran, he was so wide open, Cam, and, and with his size and strength, you know he's going to make a play for the end zone. 2:54 to go in the fourth. 19-12.
San Antonio up on Alaska. Back to pass, Cochran, middle, caught, first down. In the 30, oh, they said he didn't get the first down. That's, that's another terrible call. That was Clifton with the catch. Yeah, these stripes, man. They have not uh, been good tonight. Right? Not, not been good tonight, absolutely right. Cochran gonna throw again, wide open. And turning around, getting the first down to the 40. You can see the adjustment now. They're throwing short to Clifton instead of the outside. 2.26 to go in the fourth. 19-12, Cochran again to throw. Middle, caught, first down to the 48-yard line. Warner on the tackle, but that was Como. Something. They have found something in the middle here, Cam. 2.14, 2.12 to go in the fourth. Back to pass, Cochran, short middle again. Caught, first, uh, gain of five yards to the 43-yard line. That's Como again, and that is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Hi, this is Greg Morris, owner of the San Antonio Vaqueros, and you're watching the SFL Network on Twitch. Nineteen to twelve, San Antonio. We have not had an offensive touchdown in this game for the first time, and it's got to be over two years of competition. Two receivers, two backs, Cochran to throw, Cochran all day. Look at the routes that are open. That's a first down to the 38. He gets crushed by Okoye. That was Clifton on the catch. Yeah, I was about to say, San Antonio got saved by that two-minute warning. They could do a little game plan switching, but again, wide open in the middle. Deep ball! Deep ball! One-handed catch to the 13-yard line! Optimus Klein and Alaska's in the red zone! It was only a matter of time, Cam. You know they can't keep a good man down for long. And finally hit on one of those bigger chunk plates. And what, what a wonderful time to, for that to happen for Alaska. 125 to go. Both teams have all three timeouts. Alaska trying to tie the game up. Finally hit somebody deep. Back to pass. Klein, short throw, sideline, caught. Out of bounds at the six. Como again. He's up to close to double-digit catches. Second and three. And Como does a smart thing there. Gets what he can get. Doesn't, uh, you know... Uh, try too many theatrics to try and get in the end zone. Gets out of bounds. Saves that clock. Boy, they are knocking on the door tying up this game. They've been here before. They were here just a few minutes ago when the drop pass resulted in the pick six that's been the difference of the game. Cochran does not like what he sees at the line. He's going to change it. He's seen a ton of audibles from Cochran tonight. He's signaling out to his receivers. He changes to a fade back in the end zone. Knocked away. Nearly intercepted. Wow. Third down. And I'm not sure, I couldn't see the number, but I, I have a feeling that was B.J. Armstrong. If that's that's the one area of the field that I'm avoiding tonight. That guy has already got two interceptions. The aforementioned 102 yard touch defensive touchdown interception return. But hey, that is Optimus Klein over there. You're right, it's uh, Armstrong you, defending him. You want that, you want to go to your clutch guy in this situation. Third and three at the six, Alaska needs a touchdown. Cochran gonna go to climb one more time. Knocked away by B.J. Armstrong. He is the GOAT tonight. Boy, let me, <laughs> they, they, are, they are honed in. Cochran is honed in on Klein. The heat. Klein obviously has the height advantage. You wanna see maybe a, a better placement of the ball so Klein can get up uh, instead of lingering there at the, the edge of the end zone. Maybe do some kind of a 50-50 ball. Alaska has, caught, uh, has all three timeouts. Fourth down and three at the six. Trying to tie. Ron Cochran is under center. Cochran, five-step drop. Cochran all day. Opposite corner, touchdown! Touchdown, Alaska! One-point game! We have got a ball game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been lulled to sleep by these field goals, this fourth quarter has been electric. And Cochran, again, Steady. Ice in his veins. Finds the receiver. Fourth down and three. No problem. No problem for Cock. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. Now, this is a key field goal here. Uh, extra point attempt. Excuse me. 105 left. I don't know how Merrill got so wide open. Here's the extra point for Gretchen. Great hold. Great snap. Perfect. 105 to go. Again, the playoff standings coming into the night. Alaska third, San Antonio fifth. 
And what a game, Steven. This has turned into be. That is our first offensive touchdown of the night in almost two hours on the air. <laughs> yeah, and uh, wouldn't have it any other way, Cam, because uh, this is where we're staring down the barrel of possible overtime. A minute and five seconds for San Antonio and their star kicker to get in position for maybe a game-winning field goal. Warner up to the 26-yard line. If you're joining us for the first time tonight, we are the first controllerless competitive eSport in the world. Off the field, real-life users like you create, customize, and shape their very own football player's career every step of the way. On the field, hands-free gaming built on team strategy, strengths, and weaknesses allow everything and anything to happen. And a lot of those users on these teams are in the chat right now begging for a victory. 101 to go in the fourth. Langdon out of the gun, which we haven't seen much tonight. Langdon, first down. What a throw, a bullet to Holder. 50 what a seconds. Making up for that drop pass. Langdon getting aggressive. Back to pass going long again. Caught again. Holder at the 31 yard line of Alaska. Uh, Scratch my head, where was this for three and a half quarters? These wide receivers now starting to come alive. And Langdon, look at the dot that he puts. Hey, that is not a guaranteed catch right there. That is a 50-50 ball. And say, he puts it up there. His quarterback puts it up there and says, hey, young fella, go up and get it. So 43 seconds left. San Antonio and Alaska still have all three timeouts. Unbelievable. And San Antonio already into field goal range, so Alaska's gonna have to really think hard about what they're gonna do on this next series of plays. Langdon can't make the critical mistake deep down the field. Caught! Caught by Holder, and Alaska's gonna call time. All right, so yeah, absolutely. A good timeout by Alaska, because they have got to figure out what is going on in their secondary, because Holder is going off. That this is guy. A, look at him explode through his route cam. The, the distance, the separation he got from the defender made an easy target for Langdon. That is three straight catches for, uh, and this is the smart, well, we got two backs in the backfield. Alaska, I don't believe, they've only got two timeouts. San Antonio is in the driver's seat. They can win on a game-winning field goal as Langdon is just gonna sneak it for one yard. Alaska's only got one timeout left. San Antonio can just do this a couple more times and win the game. Wow. And, boy, and, and, and you know what? Gutsy call to run the quarterback sneak. Quarterbacks are not known for holding on to the ball very well, especially if you get hit by one of those big, massive uh, Alaska defensive linemen. But he holds on to the ball here, and they may have a victory. Split backs for San Antonio. Just trying to avoid doing something silly. That passes out to Silver. Silver's got a touchdown. Wow. Hey, <laughs> why settle for a game-winning field goal when you just get in the end zone? Well, I'll tell and you maybe, why. Optimus Klein. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you, if you're Alaska, maybe that's the game plan. Yeah. Let's go ahead and give him the touchdown and let us try to get our offense, uh, you know, that just scored, get him back on the field. Why not? Well, I mean, they, the game was already lost because they didn't have enough timeouts to stop the clock. And uh, with that, with the way these kickers have been kicking tonight, they're not missing anything. Oh, my goodness. 30 seconds left in one timeout for Alaska. Boy, I get, uh, I get trying to, the holders had some issues, but, man, if I was San Antonio, I just would have sat on it. Now they give yeah. Alaska the chance to force overtime. With their, and in this game, I, I mean, I think I've seen it all. Uh, the updated standings, right, Alaska is third, San Antonio is fifth. This is a critical game. Alaska undefeated coming into the night. Hey, and don't forget Klein and Merrill, the two Alaska wide receivers, really important in the last series, starting to warm up. They're going to need those two and big plays from both if they're going to get it down the field and get in the end zone. Oh, man. I'm going to need to take a, I'm going to need to go get the garden hose, get some more water if this thing goes to overtime or if Alaska does something unthinkable with 26 seconds to go. 26-19, so one of the wackiest, weirdest games in SFL history, and we're happy that 343 plus of you and many, many more earlier tonight have, uh, have been witness to this. And if you left this game in the third quarter, you are a fool.
And I do not pity you. 26 seconds to go in the fourth, first and 10. At the 20 for Cochran, who's out of the gun. Cochran back to pass. Cochran going far side, knocked away. Nice anticipation by the defender right there. Uh, can really gain a lot of ground, sideline to sideline, and cr a, a clutch play there to knock the ball away and, uh, you know, let Alaska right. reset. It's fourth down it's fourth down territory no matter what for Alaska, but the time is the key, 22 seconds. B B.J. Armstrong is really, uh, he's been the hero for San Antonio because he's not letting Optimus Klein do much of anything tonight. Second down and 10. Cochran back to pass, gonna go quickly outside the line. He's gotta get out of bounds. He did. With the 26, that's his 11th catch. And Armstrong let him have that. Armstrong was playing coverage in the parking lot camp. That, so, so that's not gonna bother them. Uh, that's five seconds off the clock. That's fine, San Antonio will take that. Yeah, they're not gonna be, they, they do that a few more times, the game is over. Right. Alaska's gotta get it. And I think the Hail Mary is fresh out <laughs> since, since we saw it last night. So Alaska's got to get something going down the field here. 17 seconds and one timeout. Cochran back to pass. Going to float it short again. Caught. No. They said it wasn't a catch. That is unbelievable. And that, that makes it fourth down and four. And what a time for the stripes to interfere in this Alaska possible comeback. Oh, and they're going to review it. And now we actually do have a replay. Jeez, Amazing. Gets nice crazier. job, stripes. Nice job. <laughs> These guys, this crew needs to be officiating the championship game at the end of the season. <laughs> no, please no. That's a, that's a catch. I mean, come on. I mean, it's clearly the one foot in bounds on the sideline needed in the SFL. How do you miss that? After review, the pass has been and they overturn it. Wow. Oh, man. But Alaska's got a whole other problem. They still have one timeout so they can attack the middle of the field, but only 14 seconds left. All right, well, Conkern's going to have to do right. the thing that he's been avoiding all night long. He's going to need to get the ball down the field. Uh, 14 seconds left. You don't have anything to lose but the game. 1,006 of you. 1,104 of you. 14 seconds. Cochran on fourth down. Cochran got it on first down, actually, since they overturned the play. Nine seconds left. 44-yard line. I think they're going to have to throw Hail Mary, Stephen. They don't have any timeouts left. Well, I mean, well, first of all, I want to see how this ball was caught. I thought it was going to another wide receiver. Okay, it just, man, what a pass. What a clutch pass right there. Uh, but, yeah, Cam, you know, if they can, try to inch a little bit closer. I, would, I wouldn't fault them for going another one of those out routes that goes out of bounds and then go for the Hail Mary. Um, oh, my gosh. San Antonio. Good. San Antonio was the first team to lose on A.O. Mary. It's only happened twice in over 600 SFL games. And Cochran is going to get hit as he threw. Now there's four seconds left. This is deja vu. I saw this yesterday. Yeah, well, he just uh, spent too too much time just cocking his, Cochran cocking his arm back, trying to get enough power or enough juice in his arm to get it downfield. We're going to see deja vu right here, Cam. Cam that, that's Hello. all they can do is try for that uh, Hail Mary attempt. Here we go. Four seconds left. Could we actually game. see back-to-back -back Hail Marys when we've only had one in SFO history coming into this week? The odds are not in Alaska's favor. Cochran back to pass. He's got all day. Cochran in trouble. Avoids a sack. Oh, my gosh. Cochran throws it, and the pass is knocked up in the air, and incomplete, oh. and that's the game. <laughs> what, what movement in the pocket, Cochran, to get just enough space to get that ball away. And there was an opportunity there for the wide receiver to get that ball. Just didn't react. What a way to end what was a great defensive battle. Wow. Wow. A refresh of the stats and the highlights. This is one for the books as Alaska goes down in primetime in San Antonio. Now just a game out of first in the West. And they will maintain their position in the standings to get two balls. A run for their money is the chase for the Eskimos 10th championship. Officially begins tonight, heading into the second half of the season. Stephen, what a game. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a snooze fest to start. Boy, it, it, it is exciting, as we're used to here in the SFL. If you were playing a drinking game and taking a shot maybe after every field goal, 
do not drive home. Give your keys to the bartender and uh, take a taxi or Uber because uh, there are a lot of field goals tonight. But boy, what an amazing ending to this game. And it all circles around that 102-yard uh, defensive touchdown interception return. Well, we hope you all out there in Twitch Nation enjoyed the photo finish if you just got here and uh, an incredible game. Close, fought hard, tooth and nail all night. Daily Holder came up huge. BJ Armstrong came up huge. These are real people. They were in the chat tonight and they made it happen. They were the superstars in prime time and that's what we're all about. BJ Armstrong is your player of the game. Five tackles, two pass defended, two interceptions, and a 102-yard interception return for a score that ended up being the difference. Yeah, and these guys are, are important. They're, 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 they're affecting their player on the field. They are progressing them. They're going through training every week to make these plays happen. For Stephen Mullinex, I am Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music. And we hope you had a lot of fun. From San Antonio, Texas, for all of SFL Nation, good night and thanks for the support.